by Teresa Volter. What exactly is sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell anemia is a form of sickle cell disease caused by two inherited hemoglobin S genes, one from each parent. Persons with sickle cell anemia produce sickle-shaped red blood cells. Figure 1 shows that if one parent has the sickle cell trait, there is a 50% chance a child could be born with the inherited trait. If both parents have the trait, there is a 50% chance a child could inherit the trait, a 25% chance the child will not inherit the trait, and a 25% chance the child will be born with sickle cell anemia. If one parent has sickle cell anemia, the child will be inherit the trait. If one parent has sickle cell anemia and the other parent has a trait, there is a 50% chance the child will inherit the trait and a 50% chance the child will inherit sickle cell anemia. Lastly, if both parents have sickle cell anemia, there is a 100% chance the child will inherit the disease as well. Sickle-shaped red blood cells are unable to carry adequate amounts of oxygen to tissues in the body. Unlike normal RBCs that have a lifespan of 120 days, these cells live only about 10 to 20 days. Sickle cell disease was the very first example of a genetic disease being traced to its precise origin at the molecular level. A mutation with one nucleotide in a chain of amino acids results in a substitution of valine. The mutation results in the structurally abnormal hemoglobin S being produced, causing the characteristic sickle-shaped cells. What are identifiable signs of sickle cell anemia? Persons with sickle cell anemia frequently have severe pain episodes referred to as sickle cell crisis. These pain crises occur when sickle-shaped red blood cells affect tissues and organs, usually causing blockages in narrow areas of blood flow. Figure 3 shows yet another symptom of sickle cell anemia. Swelling of the hands and feet are usually visual signs found in infants in, with sickle cell anemia. There are symptoms that require prompt medical attention. Frequent and reoccurring pneumonia is very common. As a precaution, fever, chest pain, wheezing, and cough should always be assessed by a medical professional. How can sickle cell anemia be determined? Sickle cell anemia is diagnosed through lab results and the appearance of specific target cells under a microscope. Figure 4 shows examples of target cells abnormal RBCs that have a bullseye appearance in the center of the cell. Hemoglobin electrophoresis and the sickle dex test are also ways sickle cell anemia is diagnosed. Complications. What organ systems are affected by sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell disease affects almost all organs systems in the human body. The most obvious is the circulatory system. Remember earlier we discussed how sickled red blood cells are unable to carry adequate amounts of oxygen to the tissues and organs throughout the body. Possible complications include ischemic cerebrovascular accident, transfusion related illnesses and transfusion reactions, reticulocytopenia, and bone marrow necrosis. Acute chest syndrome, very similar to pneumonia, and pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure in the lungs, are complications that affect the respiratory system. The spleen, part of the lymphatic system, is often greatly affected by sickle cell anemia. Some patients with severe complications as a result have their spleens removed. Persons with sickle cell anemia also face the possibility of developing cardiomegaly, an enlarged heart. Some possible effects of sickle cell anemia to the nervous system include stroke, blindness, and cognitive impairment, even anxiety and depression. 
Because of the small blood vessels required to deliver oxygen to the eyes, sickled red blood cells can cause these blood vessels to break open and cause bleeding. This can consequently lead to blindness. Renal complications are examples of how sickle cell anemia affects the urinary system. Sickle cell patients frequently urinate more than persons without the disease. They must drink large quantities of water to prevent dehydration. Renal dysfunction and possible eventual failure, hematuria, and nephrotic syndrome are among several complications that affect the urinary system. Priapism, painfully long-lasting erections of male sickle cell patients, is one way that the reproductive system is affected. This condition can lead to future erectile dysfunction. Gallstones, caused by too much bilirubin in the body, is a complication of the digestive system. A vascular necrosis of bones and joints and osteomyelitis are complications of the skeletal system, while chronic skin ulceration affects the integumentary system. Possible multiple organ failure when two or more major organs fail is rare but very serious. Multiple organ failure can occur during an unusually severe pain crisis. Can sickle cell anemia be prevented? The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends screening of all newborns in the U.S. for sickle cell anemia. Most state-based screening is done from a heel stick before the baby is released from the hospital. According to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, the exact number of people in the U.S. with sickle cell disease is unknown. It may be possible to prevent the onset of some symptoms. It may be possible to prevent the onset of symptoms by proper fluid hydration, avoiding high altitudes with poor oxygenation and climates with extreme temperatures, and taking preventative medications such as penicillin in young children to reduce infections. Persons with sickle cell anemia should receive all routine vaccinations and even some not so routine like the flu and meningitis shots. Risk factors that can precipitate sickle cell crisis include physiological stresses such as abrupt temperature changes, hypoxia, dehydration, infection, fever, physical exertion, pregnancy, and psychological stress. What are the treatment options available for sickle cell anemia? Because each case of sickle cell anemia is different, there is no single treatment option that works for all patients. Health maintenance starts with early diagnosis, vaccinations against bacterial infections, and treatments of complications. Treatment of complications include antibiotics, pain management, intravenous fluids, blood transfusion, and surgery, all backed by psychosocial support. The care of these patients is focused on symptom management and treatment of complications as they arise instead of curing the underlying disease. Current treatments include oral medications such as aspirin and ibuprofen and fluid hydration. To thin out the blood, sickle cell patients are reminded to drink plenty of water, especially when dealing with a pain crisis. Lifelong treatment involves limited options that include pharmacotherapy such as hydroxy hydroxyurea, chemotherapy, and opioids, RBC transfusions, supportive care, and rarely bone marrow transplantation. Hydroxyurea is a major advancement in the management of sickle cell anemia. It increases the concentration of fetal hemoglobin, which more closely resemble normal RBCs relative to hemoglobin S. Because hydroxyurea has a slow onset and can be used to prevent the chances of a pain crisis, 
but is not beneficial in treating acute episodes. Gene therapy is being studied as a possible treatment. Researchers also are studying whether they can turn off the sickle hemoglobin gene or turn on a gene that makes red blood cells behave normally. The current goals of SCA therapy include optimizing outpatient regimens and improving patients quality of life. The only cure for SCA is bone marrow transplantation from an unaffected donor. Although is it associated with a high cure rate, transplantation is rarely performed because of the shortage of suitable donors and the associated risk for morbidity and mortality. One of the major barriers to more widespread use of stem cell transplantation is finding human lymphocyte antigen or HLA match donors. Thank you for your time and your attention.